Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you part of the process of how I move fish around the facility. So, you've seen in previous videos the last part of this where I move the hang-ons into the 20s and that's the last step. So I'm going to show you what we do before then in order, in order to open up those 20 gallons. So, it takes a little bit of plan, uh, planning out because I want to not only give each tank of fish as much room as possible, but I also want to clear out as many tanks as I can to make room for more fry. So first, I'm going to turn off the air. So it all starts with the vats. So most of these are full of grow outs um, or for sale mails. So what I do is each week we, we sell a bunch of fish and so I'll thin out males in each of these tanks and then in this case this tank, this tank, and this tank were getting pretty thin so I combine them with appropriate sized males on this side so I got like a large vat, large plus vat here a large plus extra large vat here an extra large, extra large plus vat here and then so on and then you get to the jumbo, jumbo plus um, and these still all have plenty of room so I'm going to be moving even more males from this other row into here next week to open up even more room so right now I got three vats open this one and then these two are that, I, that I showed you so now what we're going to do is move 75 gallons and 40 gallons of tanks into this into these vats uh, I'll start on that now I'm going to turn on the air though and just have it closed off for the certain sections So, I'm going to be working on this row first. And this is going to be part one of two. So I'm going to be moving 75 gallons and 40 gallons. And the next one I'll be moving 40 gallons and 20 gallons. And then clearing out a row of 20s for the new fry. But this is the whole process. Uh, of how I go from a vat to being able to empty out the hang-ons and 20s and be able to strip new fry each week because I'm out of hang-ons right now they're all full so I got to do this to make room for for new fry so this tank has OB drying bloods these are from our fire and ice breeder group I'm gonna get the other net Use it for the wrong row. What did I, I think I left it outside. I'll just use this one for now. I got quite a few stunners in here already. As you can see, some blue and red OBs. Some of the, I got even nicer ones in there, but the dragon blood OBs. So they got less blotches and they got this pinkish orange color in them. some of the even nicer males. This is a, this is an excellent strain. These guys are barely two inches. Great color already. This is a fire and ice, so they get a bright white face. Little blue dragon blood throw off, beautiful male. More dragon OBs, bunch of them. So this is a 75 gallon tank. I got have about 100, 150 in here. 
and they're getting a little bit crowded. They can stay in here for like another month, but if I move them to a vat, they'll continue growing really well. Another nice Obi Dragon. These guys have another probably three to four months for their for sale size. That looks like it. All right. These uh, big nets are a lifesaver. Uh, you can see this. It only took like two or three minutes to get all of those. And we're going to be starting to sell these soon. Uh, we got somebody who custom makes them for us. And uh, we should be getting them really soon. Oh, there's still one in there. It blends in. It's a gray one. Couldn't see him. All right, that is it. Careful you get, careful none jump. And bring them over here. Okay, put them in this vat. Check real quick to make sure I didn't leave any in there. Yep, yeah, we're good. Okay, so this is a uh, 275 gallon IBC tote. They grow much quicker in here. A lot more swimming room. That's one of the stud fire and ice OBs. I was about 150. They look a lot smaller here compared to the 75 gallon. And then I'm going to be moving some albino dragon bloods in with them. Stunners. Great color on them already. Good. Nice male. Could be selling these guys soon. Once they're about an inch bigger. They're on two and a half right now. 
This drain gets super red. And a really nice mount. Looks like it. Much easier to see these because they're uh, that white orange color from being a bino. my old marker. Yeah, I got a newer one. This should be it. Yeah, this one work. writing the number, how many I put in there, and then I'll write the date on the ones that I bred. I'll do that after. Alright, that's one vat down. Now, let's see what was next. Um, I've got two in the other room. I'll be moving... Uh, I've got some Luandas. I'm gonna be gonna be moving to a 75. I don't know if I'll do that this video. Oh, it was the found this other row. I remember now. This tank here, red from Borali and Fusco's. They're really growing, growing good, so I'm gonna put them in a, a vat to really help them out. Grab the net. Species like this grow like weeds when you give them bigger tanks and a lot more swimming room compared to jam, jamming them in a small tank.
and you can see this is an awesome strand of Borei. They color up tiny. Look at this. Fed only our food. Look at that little guy. About two inch. Already has color. Even the Fusco's. That, that's a little male right there. He's got color. Yeah, just good clean groundwater and uh, good quality food. It makes a huge difference. And giving them plenty of space. That's my three go-tos. More males clearing up. Look at that. <laughs> Already a bunch of them. You want to be careful on what species you're mixing together. Like you don't want to mix a dominant half like a Fusco with, with peacocks. It's just usually not going to end very well. So I got a very hardy half of Redfin Borelli with them. And I've done it before and they do great. No problems whatsoever. And like for the ones you just saw, I'm putting albino dragon buds. Which albinos are, tend to be a little more passive in with the... OBs, OB peacocks, so I'm putting peacocks with peacocks and they're they're both pretty uh, hardy species, so they do good. And then you got some species like Lethanops and other um, weaker species of peacocks that you want to keep uh, separated until they're like two or three inches or so before mixing them with anything. They just do better that way. That should be the last three. Ugh. All right, right here.
Alright, that was a bunch. At least 150. And 419. Alright, and then for the last fat, I'm going to go to the other room, and then I'll probably move some 40 gallons into the 75 gallons, because uh, I still got some time. Oh! There we go. Popped out. These floor fans come in real handy uh, in wet environments like this. So these used to have our Victorian breeders, but I moved them into the main facility. Uh, we're just in because it's kind of a pain getting into the tanks back here. So I just put fry, um, some fry and juvie grots because um, I don't have to get them in, into them every two weeks like the uh, the breeders. I can just put them in here, and then a month or two later, I'll take them out. A lot less work. These are the auto pharynx walteri, a very rare species that you don't see very often. And I also breed the uh, walteri peacocks. Should have some males of those ready soon. We're back there. Come on, guys. There we go. Two. Should be down to the last couple. One. Let's see. 
there's one. I think this is the last one. I'm hoping. Yeah, I believe so. Alright. Good. Okay, let's take these. These are the uh, Fire and Ice Dragon Blood Obi Breeders. The main breeder male, beautiful. Alright, about a hundred. Alright, next is going to be Uchillus, and they're going to go in with the uh, Walter Eyes. About the same size, same temperament, so they're not going to really pick on each other. Yeah, so like, this tank was not fun getting into uh, every, every week or two. Uh, probably imagine. <laughs> These guys are really cute. You chill as thick lips. Oh, a little book of noto in there. Hmm.
a little male looks like. Yep. The male's darken up a little bit, and I'll start showing just a hint of color. They, uh, this species colors up a lot later than most others. Unless they're with females. You guys can see. I'm trying to keep my head down. There's more of them. Should be close to the end. How many more we got? There's one right there. Alright. And I think that's it. Here we go. Oh. I think that's it, so we're good. About a hundred of those too. Alright, so you chill us. Close one hundred. Alright. I think this video Yeah, I'll, I'll do a few more tanks. I think we're at about a half hour right now. This tank's going to be for the Obi Luandas, but I think we'll do that in the next video. Uh, Obi Luandas. The Kata. I'm going to move those. 275. I'll do the uh, saffron. I'll probably do those. Eureka. I'll do the fricadas. Turn the air off.
These are a uh, species of Tinea lithinox. I think that's how you pronounce it. Really cool fish. They get a big snout on them. These guys get huge. They get over a foot long, closer to 16 inches or so. These guys are about three, three and a half or so right now. I gotta get them a little bit bigger before I start selling them, but you'll see them on the website really soon. Yeah, like this has gotta be a young male here. Yeah, that's a young male. About three and a half or so, but I like to get them a little bit bigger before I sell them. These guys, they're pretty late bloomers. They don't even start showing a little color until five or six inches. And they don't turn full, full color until eight or nine inches usually. Um, when they're just tossed in an all-male tank, at least. If they're with females, they'll color up sooner. That should be it for those. So. Go ahead and put them in this tank here. So they don't jump. They'll be much happier in a bigger tank. I think I'll cut it here and save the rest for the next video. I'll probably make this three parts. This will be the first. The second I'll be moving most of the 40s into the last 75s and then the uh, 20s into those um, 40s. Uh, and then the last one I'll be moving the, uh, the 20s around clearing up. I, I usually like to open up a section at one time. So like from here to there will be all new ones um, so I can keep a better eye on them instead of just Doing like one here and one there and one there, but let's turn the air, let's turn the air back on. And uh, probably make it four parts where I move the fry into those, and then even where I where I'll show you when I strip the fry. So this will pro probably be like a five-step uh, series. Um, showing you the whole entire process uh, from the vat all the way to me stripping the fry but hope you enjoyed thanks for watching and make sure to uh, like and subscribe and then turn on notifications so when I post the next uh, three or four uh, you'll get a notification but thanks for watching